Welcome to The O Show, I'm Laura Babcock. Ontario and all of Canada was hit with an earthquake of political news yesterday. Ontario Premier Doug Ford is reversing the decision to take those lands out of protection. And not only that, he's not just throwing them back in some review, he said he will not touch the green belt. This is massive news. Let me go to you, Keith Leslie, former Queen's Park reporter. Is there any other way forward than for Doug Ford to take it for the team and go? I really don't think so. Not as he can't stay with the team right up to the 2026 election. Just can't be done. I don't think he as a leader is just there's just way too much baggage. This isn't going to go away. There's still so many more questions to be answered. The investigations are going to keep going on. We haven't even heard from the Mounties yet. So this is going to drag out for Lord knows how long. Uh, he needs to start grooming another leader if he wants to have some influence or at least, you know, let his caucus know that there's going to be a leadership change and get set for it. So the party has time to rebuild itself with someone else. I thought that his, his which must have been a terrible moment for him on Thursday to come out in Niagara Falls an hour early. That shocked me alone. Uh, but to then, you know, uh, reverse course, admit it was a big mistake. He backed right down. We're going to put it back in. I mean, that must have been incredibly difficult for him to do. And yet he knew, maybe his caucus finally convinced him. We told him that the backbenchers were going to come to you sooner or later and let you know they, this was unsustainable. They clearly did. Uh, and I think it's remarkable. I think you you talked about the message you're sending across the country. Absolutely. The message here is that a majority government just reelected for a second mandate with a second majority can be forced to back the hell down when the public doesn't like it and when journalists do their job and really dig in and start digging up stuff about Vegas vacations and, uh, you know, that, that tie right into a, a major developer and the, the premier's housing staffer right in the premier's office. All of this stuff, that just stunk to high heaven. And I'm convinced that, 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 that resignation of Rashid Khalid uh, and then the, the, the stench, the outright stench of that whole Vegas vacay, the developer, the premier's office, all tied right together. The digging into that's not going to stop. But at least reversing course is going to stop the public protests, I would think, for the most part. Those, you know, the big meeting we saw in Ancaster, two of them, people were, what do you mean we're going to engage with the government? And no, just don't even engage with them. We don't want this. The public was so clear, so vocal all the way through this uh, that I, it's just uh, my first question was, Premier Ford, what took you so long? I don't think his government survives the incredible pressure. There will not be a cabinet minister who's respected. There will not be a local MPP who is listened to. Every other file, whether it's the Ontario Place, the 413, what's happening with healthcare, LTCs, education, everything is now going to be seen as potentially corrupted by what we have found out was going on in the premier's office. I think- But they're potentially winnable fights. We can win the Ontario Place fight, perhaps. We can win the fight against privatization or more privatization of the healthcare system. It's there. This government is wounded, badly wounded. And, and you know, they're going to have to do a lot to make up to them. But getting rid of the premier will go a long way if they can rebrand themselves back to being, what was that? Oh, the PC party of Ontario, not Ford Nation. Right, the the door is wide open for them to do this, to rehabilitate themselves, but they cannot do it as long as he stays in the premier's chair. Why drag it out? Why are you going to be constantly a source of distraction and a source of rage for your party? You know, it's the same argument people are making about how Trudeau has got to get out of the way because he's become too much of a lightning rod for, for the liberals federally. I mean, you can't have it both ways, folks. <laughs> you know, Ford has become more toxic. His brand is done. The question is, how long do you suffer under it? So let me ask you, Mark. In ways that there's still a lot of uh, rubber uh, uh, on the road to go over, three years is a long time. Mm -hmm. um, the public uh, has short memories, um, and you know people vote in a they vote in a moment, and you know they, and we can't vote right now. So there's probably a lot of work going to be undertaken in the next little while to uh, salvage uh, Ford's brand. Um, does he win in the next election? Maybe not, but I don't think he's going to resign anytime soon. Um, I just don't see it unless they're they're coming up against something even more awful in the in the coming weeks. They know um, what's going to be happening. Uh, they know what's to come. This is only going to get more worse. He's been to a plowing match. If you have farmers against you at a plowing match, yep. and you are a conservative government. Yep. That's a big wake up call. 
And, you know, farmers aren't a huge voting block, but they are the heart and soul, of, you know, of, of the vibe of Ontario. And when and the reception he got this week at the plowing match must have been a huge wake up call for him, because if you lose farmers, yeah. you know, and you're a conservative. Everyone in Keith said this earlier in a, in a show of yours. This is going to get right into every single MPP, PC MPP constituency. They are going to hear about it, and then they are going to go enough, enough. Like we got, we got, we got to reverse course here. So yeah. I don't know. I don't know. These guys, they're still so stubborn. Like I, they. Yeah, but you know what, Mark? Let me push back because you know how many times? I mean, I, I've. What have we talked about? Anything else for the last bloody six and a half weeks or whatever it's been? <laughs> this never-ending nightmare. And God knows, during this conversation, what else has changed? Right? Um, how many times people have said to me? Ford's never going to give back the green belt, Laura, never going to happen, never going to happen, right? Bullshit. You know, nobody is so powerful, so stubborn, so whatever. He's not a god. He is a man who not only made a mistake, he treated the biggest, most populous, you know, province in Canada with utter contempt. He treated people like fools. He came out lying after, li how many shows did we do where he kept coming out lying, right? Lying about the need to use the, the green belt for housing, lying about this, lying about that. So when people say to me that Doug Ford can make it the next three years, I'm like, I'm the, you know, and let's not forget the criminal investigation that might be happening. I don't know if that's what you're alluding to, Mark, that they know something worse. Like, what's worse than these shady Vegas massages and, you know, this this money envelopes full of like land deals and everything we've seen so far in Mr. X and Phoenix Kiss and who knows who else in this cast of the fundraisers characters. selling the stag tickets. Oh, my God. Yeah, there's a party chief fundraiser selling the stag tickets on there. Thank you. Thank you, Keith. So the so say that more slowly for our audience because people might have missed that breaking detail in the last 48 hours. Yeah. The integrity commissioner issued the report into what was called the, the stag and doe for the premier's daughters. It wasn't, right. it was a stag for her fiance, I guess. It wasn't a doe. The premier clarified that yesterday. Oh, okay. But it, the integrity commissioner is saying that because the premier himself wasn't involved in the involved in the picking of the, the lands that were removed from the green belt, or apparently not directly involved, he couldn't find that he'd violated the members' act. But he did say that it did seem he wanted to note that the chief fundraiser for the PC Party of Ontario was selling the one hundred and fifty dollar uh, stag tickets to developers. Uh, boy, the smell! Mine it just keeps permeating up and up and up. And that's the kind of stuff that just, whether you're a farmer or a steel worker or anything in between, any, any ordinary person just goes, well, that stinks. Yeah. We just look at that and go, that's just not right. Uh, you a family oh. friend, the premier is a family friend. And, well, you're the premier, you've been so for five or six years. You know the rules. The appearance is almost as bad as the reality. Not in the integrity commissioner's rules, unfortunately, but in everyone else's rules, the appearance of a conflict is just as bad as a conflict. Why don't you go out of your way to avoid them? He seems to go out of his way to invite them. I don't get it. And the thing that really stuck with me yesterday, and I, I didn't get back to my point, the first one that I wanted to was when he came out and he apologized, said he was very, very sorry, and we made a mistake, and we'll never touch these again. That's leadership, showing that you can come out and apologize and say you admitted you were wrong. And then when Laura Stone, I think it was, in the Globe and Mail asked, Premier, have you seen the light on the green belt, on the need for the green belt, the benefits of the green belt? Is, well, you know, we need to build houses. And uh, no, he has not at all seen the light on the benefit of the green belt versus he, property owners' rights. And he never will. And that is not leadership. That is not leadership. <laughs> that is pure human survival instincts, okay? A leader would have said that after the first week of pummeling from the public. He did not need six and a half weeks to know that he had let down the people of Ontario, broken their trust. There have been a thousand freaking shows on this, right? So that's bullshit. Not only was that bad enough that he waited that long and made it so much worse on everybody, but the fact that he followed that up by saying nobody's perfect, like a freaking five-year-old? You remember those shirts, Pobody's Nerfic? What the hell? Are you not a grown-ass man? It reminded of my friend asked her, her five-year-old, because he, he was quick to apologize. And like, <laughs> what does it mean you apologize? Everybody calms down. 
That was a five-year-old's take on an apology, and that's what we saw from the Premier yesterday, an effort to just get everybody to please calm the hell down. But to make his cabinet stand behind him, those were some pretty grim faces standing there <laughs> while he took a half hour of pummeling. I don't know why you'd make them do that. It uh, was you know, sad. It looked like a walk of shame. It looked like they were walking towards their execution or whatever that was. Like, how much damage does you want to do to their brands? I wouldn't want to be caught in that photograph. And if calming no. everyone down was the, uh, if calming everyone down was their stated strategic objective, uh, do I look calm? You should see my Twitter <laughs> feed. I'm hearing from people across the country now. This has gone national. Um, but you know, I do leadership training in communications, and yeah. it's not waiting till the last possible <laughs> second to do the right thing. That is what people who aren't leaders might choose to do, but leadership trains you to take the bigger picture into mind and to be somebody who does not want your team to suffer. In fact, you're there to inspire, encourage, and uplift. So if that's what he considers leadership or anyone else spinning in his leadership, then you don't know what leadership truly is. Mark, let me go to you on the cabinet shuffle that is supposedly happening. Like, I, I feel like he could put God in his cabinet and it's not gonna matter to anyone. I mean, how? who cares who's in the cabinet or what their portfolios are if, you know, if the, if the, what is it, the fish is rotten at the head. Well, you know, today, this morning, we learned that, uh, you know, one of his most competent ministers, Monty McNaughton, is stepping down or stepping aside out of politics. You know, don't worry, it's not because of what's going on. I, there's a lot of things at play here in terms of uh, what's going on in the Tory uh, mindset. I, I go back to the article in the Star about a month ago where one of the, senior Tory insider says, don't worry, we'll, we'll be able to ride this out. And I thought to myself, <laughs> who, that? who listens to people like that? He's either incompetent or he's corrupt or he's both, but he sure as hell ain't a good team leader. His team is falling apart in front of the world's eyes right now. So whether or not he stays for another week, another month, another six months is going to add more pressure and more pain to everyone who works for him. If he was a person of integrity, he would get out of the way and give people a chance to save and salvage their careers and their reputations. If I was an MPP in his government, I'd be looking for an exit ramp to the private sector, just like that minister or that person did this morning. I mean, why would you stay with something that's not only now toxic, but it's not even like just started. The legislature doesn't even sit until next week. And in terms of the NDP, I'll have Merritt Stiles on the program, the leader of the NDP next week. Uh, and I'll certainly talk to her about all of this. The people organized to protest, to put skin in the game every single day without them, the NDP, Liberal, or Green Party wouldn't have anything to celebrate today. It was the movement of people, the gathering of people of all political stripes, Conservative, Liberal, NDP, Green, who came together, and the media. If anybody won this, it was the journalists. The, the, and, and, and at a time when we see Metroland and Torstar and gutting community papers, and we've lost so much uh, print news, and then to see this, you know, the, the work that the narwhal and the trans everybody did. I don't, you know, I'm specifically proud of the narwhal and anybody out there, you should support these people. Yeah. They are working so hard, you know, and, and they're, it's not expensive to support them. If it was not for the CTV journalist who talked to the people at the Vegas Hotel, we wouldn't know about that fancy massage they all had, right? If it wasn't for Colin DeMello asking that, from Global News, asking that tough question to Ford early on and got Ford to reveal how enraged and fearful he was by going after Colin and creating a whole new media storm out of that, we wouldn't be where we are. If it wasn't for the narwhal, you know, breaking this early on or really going after this and all the other independent journalists and TikTok people, you know, it has been all ages, all provinces. There have been commentary coming out of the West Coast about that. I mean, really, Keith, journalism, independent journalists, traditional journalists, all of it. What's your comment as the veteran journalist on this panel? I think you've done more probably as a journalist than Mark and I. Um, what do you say to all of that? So rewarding to see and, and just probably you named a number of the great organizations, uh, the Trillium as well. They did such work on this uh, Rashid Khalid thing. They were the ones that, that drove this story, and CTV built off that as well. It's 
That's and Mark, the way it Mike works. Crawley from CBC had a break absolutely. this week. Absolutely, everybody. At a Hamilton, the, 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 it's breaking all over. Bill, journalists, this is when a, a, a press gallery and, and journalists just really come together. Uh, they're still competing with each other. They all want to dig, but everybody's digging and, and looking to find out the truth, what really went on here. And there's so much. And so when you get these, these smaller organizations, they just get the bit between their teeth. They're not looking at the clock, I assure you. These journalists are just going nonstop. They're online all the time. They're constantly feeding each other. They're getting it, and they dig up the roots. They get the real stuff, the stuff that when you saw the Trillium walking Rashid down a uh, as he hid behind his staff for a couple of weeks ago, and he walked that or a week ago, that what you could see right there. That minister is done, and a staffer in a walking scrum with one reporter calls out one question, one sub follow up. <laughs> It was a funny moment, but the Maybe. journalism all the way through this has made me extremely proud. Whether it's the main, you know, the outlets, uh, the, the 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 mainstream ones that have been around forever, or these new ones, the the, the new newsletters, the, the the advocate, they're doing such great, great work, and it, it obviously makes us all proud. But it also it benefit it just shows the benefits to the public because mm -hmm. with all those people protesting and, and and getting together and being so angry about the green belt, if the messages weren't getting out weren't being told properly, if the stories weren't put in the right context, this government never would have had to back down. And that's Absolutely. the bottom line. And that, and I just got to ask you, when you heard about the expensive massage in Vegas, I mean, I'm being as delicate as I can, but a super expensive magic lucky massage in Las Vegas is, uh, eh. <laughs> when you heard that, and you heard that it was just like a reporter going old school and following up and calling the hotel, you know, something that obviously hadn't been done in the integrity commissioner's uh, investigation. Mm. Uh, what, how did, what was your reaction when you heard about the massage, Keith? And, and what I did do, you think? It cracked me up. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, go that cliche, you can phone a Vegas hotel and find out what went on in Vegas. We didn't expect that to actually happen. I was so shocked that they went for simultaneous massages, which had to be pre- <laughs> anyway. Yeah. It's so but the, it's that kind of Who salacious goes for nonsense. Who goes for simultaneous Not men that I know. Massages. This is something, that, <laughs> that's the salacious detail, I think, that the Premier's office went, we're done. Yeah. yeah. We, we're just, we cannot ride this out anymore. I don't know whoever told me we could ride it out that far. And, yeah. I, and you know what, that, the Vegas, we're having fun with this uh, Vegas massage because like who goes on a business trip and does joint massages? Like, and, like no, um, so something, it's just, well, there's something there. But the fact that everyone I've talked to who's not into politics in the last 48 hours has said, oh, it stays in Vegas, I guess doesn't stay in Vegas. I mean, that hit people on a personal, easily populist kind of a level, right? Like, what are they doing in Vegas? Uh, so and you I, have so many trips to Vegas, you can't remember your dates for which ones you were there and when you... Just the fact that that one lie to the integrity commissioner got exposed by journalists. And to your point, Keith, all the journalists, all the indies, all the bloggers, all the YouTube and the TikTok people are now invested in this, in the truth in this. What do you think is coming? I'm, I'm, I'm not sure anything's out of the realm of possibility right now uh, after the past few weeks and uh, what we saw um, with the Vegas story and the not very happy ending of the massage. Uh, <laughs> So I, I, I'm, I'm, I think there will be at some point a criminal charge. And I think that is, you know, I think the arc, I feel like the government is, 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 and I know they are, I worked in government. You always get the advance of what's to come, right? So they know, um, they'll know before it hits the, so they have a chance, like, like with the Auditor General's report, they would have received the Auditor General's report. They would have had time to prepare their communication plan to respond to it. It's not like a drop. So, you know, with the RCMP investigation, uh, with other people who have ties to developers, you know, I, I told you in a show previously, like, you know, one of them attempted to bribe me at a fundraiser. I mean, you know, the, there's a lot. And, and who knows? It sounds like some of them took took them up on the offer so how many other stories are going to come out of these ties to developers who you know and and if i can just say one thing laura i was so giddy last night thinking about all the money that these guys lost in their little <laughs> ponzi scheme to steal the green belt from ontario too bad so sad Right. And you know what? I love that. I saw your post. I think I responded to it. I slowly sipped a bottle of Victoire Champagne uh, and enjoyed it as well, because 
I know some of these people. You know them too, Mark. We know who some of these people are. In fact, I got to text one of them and break the news about Doug's reversal. They hadn't heard, right? And the silence on the other end was something I will deeply enjoy for a very long time. There are a lot of people who got something Ill, in an ill-gotten way, right? That jumped over others because of insider stuff that flexed their money and their muscles. And it was an elite this was a win for the elites and it was a stick it in the eye to everybody else and you know tim hudak the former pc leader was on a panel with me last week and he said you know laura it's toxic to to ford's brand when he's looking like he's not for the little guy that he's for the elites and and so no matter how people feel about politics left right spectrum earth green belt whatever they hate the idea of one more advantage going to the elites. And I think I posted there will be less cigars in back rooms and, you know, sifters of brandy tonight because the people of Ontario stood up against that kind of gross unfairness. So I'm giddy too. I'm going to be giddy all weekend. Uh, Keith, let me go to you for your final thoughts. Where do you think this is going? Mark thinks there's a criminal charge that's going to drop because there's so much here. Uh, and I'm with him. I And Kathleen Wynne, when she was on, she was like, oh, there's something coming. You know, did the other shoe drop last night or is there a lot more shoes coming? What do you think? Well, the uh, Mounties were given a file by the OPP. You would think they've had a few weeks now to actually review that file or longer and make a determination whether it, so how long is this going to hang over, whether they launch one or not, it's going to continue to hang over this government's head. Think in the short term, though, what the Liberals, New Democrats, and Greens are thinking about Monday's question period. What can we focus on? And seriously, do we go with the Vegas vacay? Do we go with Mr. X, who the journalist <laughs> identified in less than 24 hours, and he's still denying it's him? Yeah. So who's telling the truth there? And did he say something under oath that he shouldn't have said? Or should there's a whole lot of people whose testimony to the integrity commissioner under oath is going to get scrutinized now. And if it doesn't hold up, uh, there's ramifications for that. I mean, it happens to be a member of parliament. They can lose their seat, let alone their job. So there's some very serious remnant. That's just question period in the short term. And they're going to be just needling and digging away. The integrity commissioner is going to be getting all sorts of different complaints on these processes to follow through. People are going to be digging into the testimony that's already been made public. Does it hold up? I don't think so. This is just going to be continued bad news for this government. And just on a quick side note, I don't want to underestimate the loss of Monty McNaughton to this conservative front bench no. because he managed to get eight private sector unions to endorse Doug Ford and the PCs in last year's election. Not public sector unions, but eight private sector. They were instrumental in helping this government get elected when an awful lot of Ontarians stayed home. They were organizing votes. Wow. So loss of Monty McNaughton today from the PC caucus as well as the cabinet is very, very significant. And Ford's going to have a tough job putting someone in there who can maintain those relationships with those unions and open up memory. He's done so much on the whole uh, skilled trade sector to, to promote that. He's been a real front face for this government and a likable one. They don't have a whole lot of those. Wow, Keith, so much there. There's a reason why your your Twitter hashtag is the Queen's Park reporter, <laughs> because you know, you know for what you speak. So question period on Monday. There's so much there. It's mind-boggling. I'll have to, it's must see TV, I guess. Um, but also, you know, the um leader of the NDP who's gonna be on with me on Tuesday, Merritt Stiles, I mean, they were putting forward an act to restore the green belt. That was a major piece that they were about to bring up. Up. How much are they working this weekend to recalibrate on where they're going? And if you're loving the Osho's coverage of this, and, and I'm going to be talking about healthcare and all these other things too, that we've got a lineup of guests waiting to get on this program because this is just blowing up. Uh, thank you so much. Please subscribe. We'll get more great content. And in fact, we've got Councillor Cameron Crutch coming on Monday, Merritt Stiles coming on Tuesday, and who knows what will happen over the weekend. <laughs> okay. Take care, everybody, and thanks for watching the Osho. And when you want to get clear what's going on here at Johnny O Show If you like to stay in the know, tune yourself into the O Show It's the O Show, Laura Babcock's the O Show With a lot of great guests, she puts them to the test on the O Show There's no doubt they'll be calling them out on the O Show Stand for something or fall for it all. Ontario, hear the call of the O Show. It's a podcast, the O Show. Laura Babcock's the O Show. Stay informed with the O Show, O Show.